I don't think it's true sometimes. Because their eyes changed color late. They were like. Eight ten for Katie. I'll write it down over here too. Right, you need that for vaccines. Or just in general. The weights. Yeah. Um also for the uh oh eight hundred and ten grams. Jean. Yeah. Yes. Uh June bug is eight thirty four. Probably, I think he was over his new weight last time. I think he was at the clinic last week, right? Uh, that was June, Bug, and Katie, I think, that oh. I brought. I think so. Somebody was gigantic last week. Oh, maybe a pa maybe the, pa the palindromes were pretty gigantic. Oh, Izzy. It was probably Izzy, maybe. One, one even? Yeah. One kilogram. Good job. Substantial. And Cricket. 808. Oh, look at you getting up there, elbow, oh, oh, and adjusting the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have one more. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to draw them up so they're pre. And then actually, it is kind of nice if we can get them to warm up for a minute. It's a kind thing to do for a kitty. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just getting that. There we go. <laughs> It's quite nice and cool in here for the kittens, actually. It's considering what temperature it is outside. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, relatively speaking, I suppose. <laughs> it's comfortable. Yeah, it's not as bad as it is upstairs or. You sleep in the hot part of the house. The cats. Yeah, the nice part. It's true. It's much nicer. Like <laughs> yeah. Hail, Doctor Fabulous. <laughs> Let's. See. Overly kind. I'm just gonna play with Kiki. No, it's a well deserved. Dr. Ferguson is also the one who did Rhodes' eye surgery and Rollins' eye surgery. All sorts of good stuff. Okay, awesome. I'm just gonna put this one. I brought an extra one in case you never know when you're gonna drop one, then you go, oh. <laughs> I need it. Oh, they're all going to be half. Half. So they're all doing well, Shelly? No concerns? They're all doing well. They have a couple of sneezes and a little tiny bit of eye discharge here and there. Um, and as you noted, still the redness in the back of the throat a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, eating, gaining weight, very active. Um, no color discharge, no green or yellow. It's it's kind of, yeah, it's like it's it's yellowish. Yeah, it's it's color discharge from nose and eyes. It's just a small amount, but it's seen, well. I saved it for you. You can look. You can see for yourself. But uh, yeah, if there's some like there's some there. Hey, sweetie. Look at you. Are you wanting to be first? Kiss your belly. <laughs> He's so dumb too. <laughs> How can these cats come from a feral background? I know, right? They're not feral at all. No. If you just want to... Are you going to be my assistant? Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Junie. Oh, Junie. Special thing that you're thinking. I'm sorry, I know. He's stuck with me. <laughs> Let me see you. Do you want here. uh here put this under your knees? I'm good. I'm good on my knees like this, yeah. Okay, well I'll put that right there <laughs> and you can put it on if you want to. I feel like I have to confess something. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Maybe it's because I find it hard to bend over. Yeah. yeah, actually, I can probably try. 
You don't do I, that. I don't. You can be on your knees if you want to. <laughs> I can go on my knees too, and then and then you won't feel short. <laughs> like I'm top towering over you. Let me peek at you. I'm sorry, sweetie. Good job. Is this the this is the coloring? Yep. Are you putting iodine in or no? I did three. I did a round of Tobrex and then a round of urethromycin the and then yeah. a round of Tobrex. Yeah. And very um, good. I'm sorry. I I'm hope you sorry. can see those crusties. Okay, a couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just a few little sneezes. Good job. Looks pretty good. I haven't Maybe taken good. their temperatures for like a week, so. Because <laughs> I knew that you would do it. <laughs> Darn. I knew I shouldn't have <laughs> let her come over. Because you didn't invite me. I invited myself. <laughs> good. Your ears are good. So they just have a viral upper respiratory tract infection. It's either probably feline herpes virus or when we tested some of the ones from the forest is that what you're calling it mm -hmm. um it was caliche right yeah so it can take a couple of months to really truly clear um and when shelly's been putting in the antibiotic ointment it's really just to prevent secondary infections um they really don't need anything likely for the um the virus itself and all of the ones there hasn't been anywhere they've sort of succumbed to the virus mm -hmm. at all. Most of Ling is actually been taken care of quite well. Your lymph nodes are good. Your face, Shelly. I'm gonna listen to your heart. I'm gonna use this one. Oh, a pediatric one. A pediatric one. So and we'll, the other one's a cardiology one. Sweetie pie. There we go. I'm not doing a very good job. Keeping Pardon her. me? I'm not doing a very good job keeping her. No, place. you're doing great. I was adjusting the camera. Got distracted. Have you listened to their hearts? Mm -mm. Do you hear something? No, this, this sounds wonderful. Sounds wonderful. Badger stole this and was chewing on it. Oh, don't. Please don't. <laughs> It'd be hard to swallow at least, though. Good. So now I'm just feeling June Bug's abdomen and just making sure I don't feel anything that feels like suspicious fluid and that the organs are the right size and the right shape. There's no pain in there. Um, and things feel very, very good. And I just sort of feel they have lymph nodes in front of their, under their, um, their jaw, and then in front of their front legs, and then behind their back legs they have lymph nodes, and we just sort of have a little feel and make sure that none of the lymph nodes um, are up. So, Miss, do you think that you will eat one of these tablets? And maybe that will distract you while I take your temperature? Mm -hmm. I had a couple caps today eat um, eat deworming tablets in the exam room. Maybe. It's very scrumptious. Oh, in the mouth. And out. And out. And in. <laughs> and out. And in. And out. Is it out? It's I can't see. I it guess keeps, it, it keeps going in and 
Then she spits it out. And I think the coating is coming off. Nope. <laughs> I can see it on the screen. I can't see she's it. Play, she's playing with it. You should eat it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we have to pop it in your mouth, and it's my favorite when you eat it. Mmm, scrumptious. Almost. Mmm, <laughs> like. I could put some food on it, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And then we'll take your temperature and give you a vaccine. She looks amazing. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Which Shelly got for you? Some snack? I had to put the food away when the pants came down. Because <laughs> he would eat all of it. Just put that little bit down the bottom. What's that? Oh, it's yum. Mm. Uh oh, that's part of your pill. You eat it? Yum. What do you think? Oh, maybe we just pop it in. Yeah. Just a little. Mm. She's, trying to, she's trying to reject it. She goes, I licked off the flavor of coating. <laughs> I think that's just, oh. I think it's, oh yeah. That she goes, I have four smarts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Good job. We delayed. <laughs> Let's do your Good job, Jimmy. I was hoping that. In the exam room, puppies and kittens, I try to give treats to so that they don't notice the thermometer. Very good. Good girl. And her, I think her weight is really good too. Yeah. They're a little bit like, you know, the rib, you can feel the ribs pretty good. More prominent than most of my kittens, but, um, <laughs> they have gained weight, and they're, I think, pretty solid, gained pretty solid. You're so beautiful. Very beautiful. And the other um, thing that makes me less worried about the mild upper respiratory is that their mom was feeling leukemia negative. Yeah. So I think that that is super awesome. That is super awesome. We're doing an American because of July 4th, so it's 101.1, which is good. Cool. Perfect. Good job, Junies. Okay. Good job. And let your vaccine love so vaccines are for which things this is um for these guys um it's going to be rhinotracheitis caliche and panleukopenia we're going to give it over the left i give my vaccine this particular vaccine is my habit and it goes in the file that it's given over the left front leg sort of lower down if you can over the shoulder um different vets will have different preferences as far as location goes um so usually on the leg, you'll see vets that even give it very, very far down on the leg. Um, even some that do it in the tail. Um, I prefer to do it in the leg, and I've had no problems doing so like that. So I'm going to get you just a holder. And I'm going to, what I, I do is I just give her a little bit of a pinch <clears throat> so that she feels the pinch of my fingers first. And then, so she's already said, oh, Good this girl. lady's pinching me. And then she gets... Um, she doesn't get distracted by the needle. And the needles are so tiny, and they're just used once. She did great. Yeah, you're a rock star. Yeah, all done. You're and then she'll done. need a booster in four weeks? In four weeks. Um, there are vaccines that for also for feline leukemia. Um, and there's vaccines for feline immunodeficiency immuno um, deficiency virus. However, um, LAPS adopts to indoor homes. so these cats hopefully will not go outside so they don't necessarily need to be boosted for feline leukemia but that's something that they can talk to their veterinarian when they get to um, they get adopted and they go to their regular veterinarian about what vaccines are um, ideal for their lifestyle oh see someone just asked what vaccines are necessary for indoor cats yeah so um i would talk to your veterinarian about your cat's lifestyle and other cats in the house whether you foster or not there's several um, different um, several different protocols that you can do depending on um, all those factors and if you travel also there you go good job you want to go down here so Junie is healthy mm -hmm. good job 
Next, we will do this very ferocious badger. The big one? Yeah, he's the big one. So, and see if you think that he's fat or if he's a little bloated. <laughs> I would never say you're fat. <laughs> I never use the word fat. Even when they come on and they're twice the weight they should be. You still don't say fat, right? What were you doing? What were you doing? There's say? more mm -hmm. to love. <laughs> uh, what do I say? But I never say fat. Apple? Um, or I'd like to work on the weight. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but we don't say that. Oh my goodness, look at you. He totally suits his name. I know. I hope you keep your name, buddy. Say ah. He was named by the chat. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good. You're very awesome. Can I peek at your little eyes too? Good job. He was the most ferocious. Very hissy. And there he's very snuggly. Good boy. Kind of the same sort of deal, hey? Mm -hmm. Just a few little eye crafts. You will do great. You will do great. Can I peek in your ears? And they've had revolution already? Yep. Yeah. They've had two strongids and one revolution. Nice. Very good. So we're just checking their ears to make sure that there's no infections, no foreign bodies, no ear mites. Um, super unlikely that a pet from LAPS is going to have ear mites because they use products that do deworming and take care of ear mites pretty much as soon as they land, hey? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or if they're not born yet, their parents have products that are safe, or their mom, anyways. Yep. Who knows where dad is, huh? <laughs> yeah. We might have, we, we might have neutered him. Yeah. I think we probably did. Mm -hmm. Look how big his paws are. He's a little big boy. A big pudgy boy. Now we can clean your eyes. Boy, big sigh. You still talking at me? <laughs> Sounds really good. Yay. Sounds really good, buddy. Very good. So good. His lymph nodes feel good. Let me feel your tummy too. And his heart and lungs sound good. I had some good kitten stories because of the kitten palooza last weekend. Oh. I got to see a few of the. Um, I got to see a few of the kittens that were adopted from the kitten palooza. Oh. But then be they lapse also. They adopted all the kittens that day, right, or the next day. Mm -hmm. So they. Um, so people went to other shelters and went to adopt other cats, oh. which I thought was super. So they got so excited by it awesome. that other cats were even saved. So I thought that was super awesome. That is awesome. Even, you know, some people drove all the way out to Chilliwack, which is probably about another half an hour mm -hmm. to go get other kittens. Aww, and I think I, that actually happened like three times. <gasps> really? Yeah. That's so awesome. So not just laps making a difference, like just for laps. That's great. But in other communities too. Isn't it? I that think is that's awesome. just awesome, yeah. I was super excited about that. I mean, that all those ones got adopted, but then they're like, oh, there's no more kittens here. Let's go to another shelter. Yeah, because we, we had no idea if it was going to be like super <clears throat> busy or no one at all. He is a little bit pot belly, hey? Yeah. But, hmm. And he's, I can hear it, like he's gurgling. Really? I can yeah. just hear him with my ear gurgling. <laughs> and he had kind of mucusy poops, yeah. Poop, right? I would probably you know, say that it's probably parasites. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think it's worth doing a panel or something, or, or just a regular poop test if I can get a sample from him? Um, or do you think just we'll I mean, I mean, I I think if we had to choose, the best thing to do is deworm. Yeah. You know, or if we had to choose, I mean, if you can do it all, it's nice. But sometimes it might just tell you what he was exposed yeah. to, and you're still gonna do things the same anyways. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had this. Yes. We um situation you'd be like hmm because mm -hmm. so there's panels that we can do for pcr tests and it tells us what sometimes there's parasites involved i mean you know almost always there's parasites involved all puppies and kittens have worms but whether or not sometimes there's a bit of a virus in there too but it's the same with the upper respiratory viruses they're not responsive to antibiotics so are we going to do anything different anyways <clears throat> Badger and Jimmy's human is watching. Oh, cool. <laughs> Good. 101.4. Good job, Badger. I heard a secret. I don't know if it's true that I get to see Eve next week. <gasps> really? I, yeah. Oh. And Eve and Aurora went to see Uh-huh. Yeah, I think I'm going to see both of them next oh, week. Oh, yay. So, I, yeah. That's I, awesome. One of our texts told me, told me, so I was pretty excited. That is pretty exciting. You want to try a snack? Oh, that's your so snack. tasty. That's a really good snack. Mm. What's that? Because, oh, you taste smell like cleaner. What's that? Mm. Like, mm. like, oh. Look at my button. But my friends, and this lady's weird. <laughs> she put, she poked me with things. I felt my kidneys. Wait, no, where are you going? <laughs> no, no days. <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly check. You eat that while I'm gone, by. Yeah. Here, let's do it this way. Okay. Will he or won't he? They like to pick it up and toss it. He does like to pick it up and throw it. Mm -hmm. There is a big black and white cat lurking beyond the door. Yes. <laughs> he wants some deworming and vaccine. I'm sure that he does. Say <laughs> ah. He is due for his. I was thinking about, about that, yeah. Yep. Can I give you just a little bit of water? So whenever you give a cat a pill, always just give them a teeny bit of water in the corner of their mouth. Because they, uh, it can get caught in their esophagus and then it doesn't necessarily work. And then also when it irritates their esophagus or their throat, um, it can cause a stricture or permanent scarring that will really hurt them. So if you end up going home from the vet without a little syringe or to give them some water, make sure that you ask for one. <clears throat> so this is the rhinotracheitis, the cleachy and the panleukopenia. I'm just going to go. And the rhinotracheitis is also known as the feline herpes virus. Good job, buddy. Very good. He's super brave. Like it didn't even happen. Good job. <laughs> yes. Oh, so adorable. Oh, it's so ferocious. Ferocious feral kitten. <laughs> He's pretty adorable. Oh, he doesn't cute. look very traumatized. I know. Cricket. Oh, Lenick. Did I wake you up? How are you, Gordon? Can I have a peek at you? <laughs> Did we grope him? Oh, no, we didn't. Let's just do that quickly so we don't have any surprises. Count testicles? Hmm. We hope for two. 
It's true. Good Yay. job. Sorry to be so mean. <laughs> oh my. This is one relaxed cat. They had some wild play <laughs> before. before you showed up. Yes. <laughs> she got very puffy and was very ferocious. Good. Because she's been playing well and mm -hmm. good. Come here. Come here, baby cat. Hey, pee catty. work. Can you peek in your ears too? We covered it up. <laughs> it was a trick. I wondered if she was going to hunt and then pick it up and eat it. That would have been amazing. Because mm -hmm. it was say when you play with a cat with a laser light, right? Always mm -hmm. put a little treat at the end. So, mm -hmm. But that was like probably too small <laughs> of a playtime. <laughs> right. <laughs> too lame. <laughs> she didn't feel she'd earned it. No. She just covered it up. Okay. You take your dewormer, lady. <laughs> your ears look good. Oh, come on. Get her a little excited for a sec. You can do more because I've got just the thing. Just her breathing. She's just sort of oh. sniffing and stuff. I just wanted to see. Sometimes you get them excited. They, um, you can hear little heart murmurs and stuff at higher heart rates. So that's a that's a really great idea. I should have one of those. Mm -hmm, it's fun. Because then it would just when you did that, her heart rate went up. Oh really? Yeah. It's better than jumping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doing jumping jacks. Oh. You do it again? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I have to see when she comes in. She's coming in in a week and a half or so. Mm -hmm. But I don't think so. You're very beautiful. Can I feel your tummy too? Oh, yeah, eat that one. Step on it. Oh no, that's stuck in her shoes. Hey, Shelly. Don't let her lead you down the wrong path. <laughs> okay, oh, she's a gigantic bird. Oh, do you want to Um, her human is watching too. Oh, yay! So no, I think I that's home. nothing to be nervous about. Just something that uh, to keep an eye on. And kittens, kittens frequently like develop little transient heart murmurs. Yeah, about one out of ten have little transient ones. But the hard part is sometimes you can't tell 
if it's a real thing or if it's just a little transient um, murmur. And I suspect that this probably is. Um, maybe actually we got her a little excited again. I'll just have another <laughs> little listen. You have a nice eyeliner. Mm-hmm. Can't hear anything abnormal now. I could get her racing around. <laughs> Not too hard. <laughs> oh boy. She's very adorable. Nico, I'm sorry for you. Oh, it's all Shelly's fault, really. A squeak. She's the most vocal. She has beautiful hair. Mm-hmm. Very beautiful. Oh, hi, DreamWorks people. <laughs> Badger and Junebug are wrestling now. <laughs> That's awesome. Not too traumatized. No, they seem to have recovered. Regardless of what the internet thinks about the thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> I love the name Cricket too. That's an awesome name. I know. That's pretty cute. You're very lovely. Okay. I'm going to do your vaccine in your left front leg. So just for the potential new home, I did, when her heart rate was elevated, I think it was mostly sniffing because I couldn't get it again. Um, I thought possibly I heard a little murmur on the left side, but I couldn't get it again. So um, we will do every, when they come in for their, when she comes in for her spay and these guys for their neuter, they get another physical exam because they're just like kids. They're growing and they're changing all the time. So sometimes we hear things once, but we don't hear it again. Um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, but I, I really truly think it's nothing to be worried about. I'm going to give you a little pinch, gorgeous girl. Oh, nice job. This is super brave cat. Good job. Super brave. Oh, so impressive. Do you want to do more? Oh, for sure. Thank Join your little friends. And one more. <laughs> also sleepy. Hello, how are you? I imagine you have a home also. Yes, she's going with Cricket. Oh, and really? Badger and Junior are going together. Oh, how nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Really cricket, you should just be heading over to the litter box. She's <laughs> <laughs> got things to attack. Very good. Can you say ah? Nice. Good job. Good job. No, Can I pick in your ears? <laughs> Pulling on the blue band. So much fun. Here we go. Make sure you have a good girl. When we get cricket, actually, I want to feel her knees. Oh, me? I was just thinking when I see your sibling here, 
You make me want to feel your knees. I do feel like ladder. Oh, it's like that big, right? Mm-hmm. Good job. Nope. So far, your Good. knees are tight. Good. Good girl. Are Katie's tight? Maybe are you or... Let me listen to that little heart of yours. Okay. Their mouths all turned out nice. I was wondering if they were mm -hmm. going to have a teeny underbite, but they do not. They're perfect. They are. And the palindromes turned out good, too. Yeah. Very cute. Do your squeaky toy or your Sometimes I do think I hear a little tiny one with her, and then I, sometimes I can hear nothing. When I say little one, I mean a little tiny heart murmur. Yeah. Do you want to listen? Mm-hmm. Is it like a, it's like a little whooshy click thing? Yeah, to, yeah, it, it's, it's super subtle and sometimes I can't, I, sometimes I don't hear it and sometimes I hear a teeny murmur on the left. Um, I think we should just re-listen to it and mm -hmm. see if we can continually hear it and then if, um, so we'll get a chance, like I said before, 
for Spade to um, re-listen to her. It doesn't mean that she has um, any type of heart disease, um, but I do sometimes hear a little tiny murmur on that left side. Katie. <laughs> I gotta go now. <laughs> You're stunning. She's not interested. Not interested in the murmur. Good girl. Quick. Okay, I'm going to, you want to, I'll just get the thermometer ready. You want to give her the deworming tablet. Okay, <clears throat> girl. A little more. Yes, good job. Good job. So the interceptor has prosequantal in it and and milbomycin. Sorry, what did I say? Interceptor. Interceptor, sorry. Because the milbomycin in it is what used to be an interceptor, oh. which was a stunning one of a, uh, just an awesome dewormer. And why did they stop making? You know what? I don't know. It hasn't been around for a long time. It was supposed to come back. Um, it was supposed to come back in the spring. I have not seen it yet. Um, it's a great dewormer for puppies and kittens. It's super safe. This is also a good one. It has part of the same medication in it, plus it also has something for tapes in case they've been exposed to fleas. Um, so it's nice that they have something for, for tapes anyways. And it's more effective than like Strongid. Yeah, the milbomycin, for, yeah, absolutely. For, for round oh yeah, like absolutely, that. yeah, it is more effective. But it's not safe to use in little teeny tiny kittens. No, they have to. Um, have a minimum weight. The, the good thing about Strongid is you can't even start when they're two weeks of age, which is um, super which awesome, do. which you do. <laughs> and then you have these wonderful, and her temperature is 100.1, oh. which is, or 101.1, .1, which is just fantastic. <laughs> Hello, Hi, do you want to apologize, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Was it worth all that? He's like, where are those kittens that try to nurse on me? <laughs> <laughs> that seemed like a very interesting endeavor. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do her rhinotrachetis, her caliche, and her panleucopenia in her left shoulder. Good girl, Miss Kitty. You got the tough skin. Good girl. Nice oh. job, you. Good girl. Good job. What a good girl. She's fantastic. She's super fantastic. They look awesome. Good. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. So nothing, no concerns. We'll check, recheck the hearts. We'll recheck the hearts. I think that they're probably not um, significant um, issues. However, um, there is little, I, with um, Katie, there is a, a little murmur. Um, more noticeable than cricket. More noticeable than cricket. Um, very well, you could listen on a different day and it could be gone. If mm -hmm. we find that it's consistently there, then it might be worth looking into. And I've talked to specialists about this and I've talked to lots of other vets because it is something that we struggle with, especially with the shelter animals because there's only so many limited resources. And, you, and we have this question is like, is it at all significant? Can we promise the owners that it's never going to be an issue? And mm -hmm. when you hear a continual murmur, you can't promise that. The way that you have to rule it out completely is when they get a teeny bit older is do an ultrasound of their heart and make sure no, nothing is um, structurally abnormal, um, which, which in my opinion should be done by a specialist. And then it, it costs a little bit of money. Um, I don't think I would lose any sleep at this point as far as I think that they look really wonderful. Their weights are awesome, lungs are good, lymph nodes are good. Um, we'll have a re-listen and then we can, we can go from there. Um, and you don't think anything uh, 
with eyes or anything with their mm-hmm. upper respiratory, just let it run its course and I keep think the lysine going? Yeah, okay. I think the lysine is great. The lysine hopefully keeps, if it happens to be feline herpes virus, it helps keeps it in check. Um, if it's caliche, it's just going to go away um, with good care and make sure that it doesn't um, get they don't get a secondary bacterial infection and that their nutrition is good which helps their immune system and um, they look really wonderful they do look what they do I mean yeah. and so for badger when he when he goes home um, they should probably or for all of them really in general when they go for their follow-up exams they should talk about further deworming and absolutely they should be the the general recommendation for deworming for kittens is deworm them every two weeks from two weeks of age until they're three months of age and then once a month till they're six months and then also you have to talk to your vet about their lifestyle um, hopefully if they're gonna you know be indoors they have a slightly different deworming schedule than if they're going to go outside um, on the west coast here we um, we do have to really be concerned about fleas we have lots and lots of fleas and even the shelter called me today they had um, four day old kittens that were infested by fleas. Did you hear that? that? Yep, I heard that. Um, and um, the shelter was doing their very best to get as many fleas off because there isn't a lot of safe things to do, but we have. You can't Capstar at that age, or can you? I was doing so. I have never given Capstar at four days of age. It is off label at that. Um, it's our backup plan mm-hmm. if they feel like they don't have them all off. Because fleas um, can kill kittens that mm-hmm. can be fatal at that age. But um, Becky, who is one of the trainers at the shelter, was really pretty certain that with the bath and the combing that they got the fleas off. And then our backup plan is we were going to um, <clears throat> give something for the fleas if need be. But we wanted to um, try the safest approach first. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And then if we feel like that's not working and the fleas are um, causing a health concern to the uh, the kittens, then we'll we'll take Plan B. But hopefully we don't have to. Yay! They're very adorable. Yes. <laughs> you guys are. We people that we don't even know how lucky we were. Life is just awesome. I know it's hard to think <laughs> that if they had been born in the wild, they probably would not have survived. No. Gosh, we've lost no. so many litters out there. The no. whole litter. Absolutely. So, are there any questions? Questions? Do you guys have questions? Uh, question about ringworm treatment. Does Dr. Ferguson think uh, chlorhexidine and climazole is effective and safe? No danger of liver damage? Topical? I, yeah. I'm assuming, yeah. Or, or shampoo? Um, or there's... Um, creams. Um, I think that there is not a significant risk of, for liver problems with those. I think that if you have significant ringworm and depending on the situation and the humans in the house and your environment that it may not be very effective. Mm. Um, as Shelly knows, Shelly's ringworm <laughs> expert, um, I've had clients who wanted to save their cat post that they just spent a lot of money and I actually called Shelly I'm like what did you find about saving a cat post because a veterinarian would say get rid of it yeah <laughs> um, so um, I think a small area of, of ringworm shaved under the guidance of an owner if there's only one cat in the house there's no children and you have to take um, the whole situation and really find out what treatment is going to be the best for, for your situation, um, you know, whether, what kind of environment is is there. Um, yeah, if you have a lot of carpet and upholstery and a stuff. A lot of carpet, upholstery, how long it's been there. And also, I think, and it probably the standard recommendation is every cat who has ringworm should be feeling leukemia and FIV tested. Because mm-hmm. we all in our life and all, and cats frequently get exposed to ringworm, but not all get lesions from it. So it's good to make sure that there's not a reason why they they have ringworm. Yes. Um, Okay, we have another one. Uh, Where did it go? This is from um, Jill the Tripod Kitty. So (laughs) (laughs) uh, ask Dr. Ferguson her thoughts on tail vaccines. Jill's oncologist wants her to have them done in the tail from now on since she's down a leg. 
So um, tail vaccines, are there any risks to that or is that that's because she only has three legs? Right, right. So and then the sense. small chance of having um, a fibro, um, uh, a fibrosarcoma from a vaccine, it is very small. It's it's in the in the chances in the hundreds of thousands. So it's very unlikely. However, if your cat only has three legs, um, nothing's wrong with doing it in the vaccine. And I think that that, uh, or sorry, nothing's wrong with doing it in the tail. Um, and I think that that's probably good advice if you have a three, if you have a tripod. Um, I, I don't think that out of the small chance of cats having any problems with the vaccines for the general population, I think you'll have a lot of angry cats. Um, so, okay, very good. Um, I picked up two foster kittens today, both very underweight, 266 and 459 grams, four or five weeks old, so skinny, bit skittish, but eating solid food and gruel. Do you have any advice? Probably deworm and keep feeding them. Yeah, deworm and, and get as many good quality calories as you can. Hopefully it's a good quality kitten food um, that's made for growing and developing uh, kittens because kitten food is definitely different than adult food. It's different. Um, there's different transit times or different gut mobility times in um, kittens and they're in cats and you want them to get the best absorption. So that's important. So good quality food, not just any food, which you're probably doing, I'm sure. Um, and deworming, and um, whether whatever group you're working with, I'm sure they have some great uh, dewormers. Probably at that age, those guys are like what four weeks, something like that. Yeah, she's been five, four to five, five weeks. weeks. Yeah. Um, so you using a dewormer that you guys have decided that's appropriate, um, and just making sure that they're hydrated and and warm and uh, as many parasites as possible, prevented. Um, so, and then someone's asking, why do we tattoo versus microchip for the lapsed kittens? Because it's more visible. Um, and it's also less expensive. Um, tattooing, um, a couple of things is, um, tattooing is very visible. So, um, and microchips occasionally, um, very occasionally they can't be read after a while same thing with tattoos however you can at least see a remnant of a tattoo um so that you know when you see a tattoo um in british columbia and it's in the right ear you know that that cat um has either been spayed or neutered and then you don't have to go and do an unnecessary surgery looking for um you don't have to do an unnecessary surgery looking for a uterus um, and we had that actually that example at LAPS last week. Oh. I, I felt slightly embarrassed. I, there, I could not see a space scar. Um, they had actually kept the cat for a while because she was so round. There, instead of fat, oh. they said well, she was round. They were <laughs> they were concerned she was pregnant, so we gave it some time. We took an X-ray because you can't. Um, but we couldn't see kittens on the X-ray, so they gave her some more time. And she and we actually went in and we did surgery. And looking for a uterus, it was a quick surgery, but we, she had no uterus. But if that cat had been tattooed, she wouldn't have had that time at the shelter. She probably would have been in a home. Mm -hmm. And um, we wouldn't have had to go looking, using LAPS resources and our resources, looking for a uterus that was gone at some previous time. Was she pregnant with worms or just? Yeah. <laughs> just fat? I think Lump, both. Round. Probably both. Round, I mean. She was probably more round with calories than worms, but uh, <laughs> always, always deworm. Deworm is such a wonderful way to keep them healthy. Uh, someone say, okay, Lynette's saying, uh, I put revolution on all three of my cats. One of them turned red on the spot and then turned into a sore. Should I try revolution on her again? Or are there alternatives? And someone else asked about advantage, so. Yeah, I have had, um, mostly or actually mostly very occasionally and I use revolution and advantage and advantage multi um, every single day and um, I have had one advantage um, it was actually I got it as a second opinion um, regardless I would have thought advantage was fine um, I had had a cat who had had a topical reaction to advantage um, that I met and I've had one that is 
happen to revolution. So I would, if your cat has a topical reaction to one, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have one to the other. One of the ones that had the reaction to the advantage was actually a cat who had had revolution at labs and it was completely uneventful. And then they had gone to go buy some advantage elsewhere and it had a topical reaction. So I think those products are super, super, super safe and having a topical reaction is not very likely at all. Um, and I think the risk of fleas, especially on the West Coast, is, is so you can get so many more problems from fleas than the very small chance you're going to have a superficial reaction to advantage or revolution. So I think it's just, unfortunately, bad luck. The pro I think the products are both awesome. Okay, very good. Um, Blue Pixie's asking, I feed a couple of feral colonies, no matter how much they eat, they seem really skinny. Is there anything that I can add to their food to help them gain? Can you put like strongid in the... I think you're not going to be able to dose food. it correctly. And even, so if one like way overdose and one way underdose, would it just kind of, they would all get some benefit? Because I've wondered that too. I know, <laughs> if you just put deworming in there. Uh, yeah, and, I guess that would be expensive, but. Well, and also like, are they going to, because a cat, you do one cc of strongid per five pounds of cat. So if you have, you need 15, what, no, I'm wrong, three cc's of strongid. You're going to get a cat to eat three cc's of strongid in a meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It would have to be, it would be tricky. And then to the, I mean, so I think, I think it would be difficult. Yeah. Um, I think if you could maybe get one of the tablets, but most of it's a little tricky because they're all by prescription and know that that cat ate that safe dose of yeah. Milvamax or Interceptor and then they did it and they were gone, then yay. But I think just putting strongent in the, yeah, you know, it's probably not great. I, it's probably not very effective and it's probably not great medicine because they are getting resistance with mm. dewormers too. Yeah. And I, I, I think that there would be academic people shaking their finger at us going, you're not dosing it properly. Why are you playing around with it? It's not going to be yeah. effective. You know, because we will, just like there's problems with antibiotics, they are seeing some things with dewormers also. Interesting. I didn't so know. treat, get rid of the worms, do it effectively and safely. So I, I, it, it's, a, it's a tough call though because I, I totally get what they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I, they probably were thinking more like food additives, but I yeah. was thinking deworm. But <laughs> I know with Sloney, I was able to put a milbum uphill in like a piece of tuna. So potentially you could do like a one cat sized milbum right. wax in some tuna and like just keep track of who's eating it. Yes. And then, yeah. But that would be expensive. And it, it would be expensive and, and to deworm and really effectively, you'd again. want to do it yeah. two weeks later. So. But is there a nutritional supplement they can add to the food to like a calorie booster or some sort of something to make them fatter, feed them kitten food? I wouldn't feed them kitten food. I would feed them the best quality adult food that they can probably afford to feed because mm -hmm. you feed kittens with different calcium phosphorus ratios. They have different intestines. So it's not just a matter of calories. You're, they're actually and you're not feeding for growth. So I would feed the best quality adult food that you probably can afford to do. I think that that would be the best thing that you could do. Just <laughs> number four. Okay. Oh my gosh. How are you doing on time? Are you okay? I'm okay. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Um, and then we had a question. Um, if a cat uh, is drinking more and peeing more, um, is that cause for concern? Yes, yeah. Um, drinking more and peeing more is, um, it's, I, I probably would assume that they're asking a question about a senior pet. Um, it's, it's a common problem we see in senior pets. Um, and in a senior pet, when I get a cat in who's drinking more and peeing more, I'm concerned about if they've been previously overweight, are they diabetic? Um, could they have a thyroid problem? If they're also not eating super well, could they have developed some kidney disease? Um, there are some other diseases also um, that can cause them to drink more, pee more, but I think that those are in the, probably the top three. So your recommendation is go to a vet? Go to, sorry, yes, go to a veterinarian, and they're probably going to recommend doing um, a blood panel and a urinalysis. And is there anything they should bring with them, any sort of? 
a cat with a full bladder. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> bringing, because when when cats don't have urine and they're drinking a lot and peeing a lot, we only have half of the answer. You really mm. want to have the urinalysis together with the the blood work to find out how well their kidneys are working. Um, sometimes a lot of those diseases that cause cats to have really watery urine, they also in addition have bladder infections because of their really watery urine um, especially if they're girls so a nice full bladder um, and and ideally um, be prepared with doing some blood work okay very good i think he was eating the kid <laughs> he's he's very fat I mean, he's very round that's why we're a little embarrassed to go in for our checkup <laughs> he's a little pudgy he actually has a bit of a waist. From the top, I can actually see a waist through him. Oh, good job, buddy. Yeah. But he was like a five. He has been a five. And now he's probably like a... Okay. It's all right. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a hypothyroid senior. Would kitten food be a good way to increase her weight and muscle mass? Hypo or hy hypo? I'm imagining it's hyperthyroid. Um, because hypothyroid is when they have a low thyroid, um, it's more of a common problem in dogs where they tend to gain weight, they're sluggish, they have a poor hair coat. A hyperthyroid where they have too much thyroid hormone, um, they, they drink a lot, they pee a lot, they lose weight and they continue to eat. Jersey, can you confirm if it's hypo or hyper? Probably going to take a minute for that to come through. She's on meds but can only tolerate half dose to see that and then oh mama meow is also asking i have an underweight senior would baby cat be good for her i would not recommend a kitten food for an adult uh, for especially for a senior cat um, you want to make sure that the um, the diet is life stage appropriate and that you want to sort of get their weight up by tackling their underlying disease old age disease is not a in itself is not an illness, so there, you want to address the reason why they don't have or why their weight is low versus trying to band-aid it and you can actually make things worse by giving them kitten food. Kitten food really is made for growing kittens. It has um, it has different calcium phosphorus ratio in it. Um, you want to make sure with senior pets it has a very specific, if they have kidney issues, a very specific amount of um, protein in it um, so it, it in the in the very short term you might make things look better but in fact you might make things worse good information um, he's actually got the door handle oh I know. yeah because you know had to, to take open. your door handle off I before know. yeah but these are the round ones and that's better <laughs> Um, what's the best tapeworm dewormer for adult indoor cats? Um, there's lots of good ones. I wouldn't say that there is just one. Um, anything that has a, a medication in it called Praziquanto. Um, mm -hmm. And you have to also, um, Panicure from Bendazole does tapeworms, but not the type of tapeworms that they get from <laughs> oh, Badger. <laughs> Not the type of tapeworms that um, cats get tapeworms either from hunting or they get them from fleas. Um, and if they have tapeworms due to fleas, you need a medication in the dewormer called Pro sorry called Praziquantel. Um, and if it's tapeworms due to hunting, there are other medications, but Praziquantel will do both tapeworms due to fleas and due to hunting. Um, Profender has it, Milba Max has it, Dronto has it. Um, those are probably the top three. Excellent. Uh, okay, let's see. Hy uh, hyperthyroid losing weight. Okay. okay, that makes more sense. Okay. So it, the, the increasing the weight. Um, I would make sure that they have, um, that they've had their thyroid recently checked and that it's well regulated. Um, because if they're losing weight and they have a history of being hyperthyroid, their thyroid might be needing, their thyroid, if they're on medication, if they're on methimazole, the dose might need to be changed. Um, or it is common for 
cats with hyperthyroidism also to have kidney disease and that maybe that needs to be addressed a little bit. Okay. There are lots of questions. We don't usually have this many questions. <laughs> are you doing okay? It's senior cat hour. I, know. I love it. I love cats. Um, what about a senior cat that's limping and drinking? I think it was drinking more. <laughs> Panseroo is entertaining us. A senior cat that's limping. And I think it was eating more, or uh, sorry, uh, drinking more and peeing more. I'm trying to find it now though. Yeah. Oh, so what causes my senior to limp as well as peeing more, drinking more? Um, there, I mean, it, obviously it is hard to see. It's hard to say without um, seeing them. However, 90% of cats, I think over nine years of age, have arthritis. Um, super common when I'm feeling cats in the exam room to find thickened elbows, mm -hmm. um, which are, let me see if I can find a kitty elbow. Here's a kitty elbow right here, right up in this area here at the top. This is June Bug's little elbow. <laughs> so right up in here um, is a common place for older kitties to have arthritis. And also along, if I can see, um, along their lower back down in here, super common also. Um, also cats as they get older can get wear and tear on their knees as you can imagine they're jumping down off of things they're driving up so it's probably arthritis but best to check with your veterinarian and also look from from anything from ingrown toenails sometimes older cats also don't groom their uh, don't groom their toenails very commonly and I found in, in probably once a month we see where toenails are curled right into the pad so it could be something simple like that um, but check for arthritis. I think the drinking more and peeing more is probably not related to the arthritis and uh, should prob probably be spoken with, it's probably speak to your veterinarian about it and make sure that we're not missing some disease that we can help slow down. Like thyroid, hyperthyroidism, renal disease, diabetes, those kinds of things. All actually, the one disease where um, you can get limping and um, drinking more and peeing more is diabetes. Diabetes, you can get a neuropathy from where they can actually not walk properly because they've had such a high blood sugar for so long that their nerves don't work properly. So actually saying that as I'm speaking through it. Um, okay, so uh, five-year-old rescue spayed female leaks urine occasionally when she sleeps. Should I be worried? No other issues. I would go and talk to your veterinarian and have a, an exam done and probably minimally a urinalysis and just make sure that um, there, you're not missing any type of um, bladder infection or other structural problem and maybe talk about, they're gonna probably ask you time of day um, exactly when the cat, that's uh, exactly when the cat's leaking urine. But I think I'd minimally, if, if you can afford to go see your veterinarian and bring her in with a full bladder, um, I think they might be able to give you some good answers about what's going on or at least what's not going on. Okay, uh, my kitty has a chronic cough with a mass in the lungs that shrinks with antibiotics. Any ideas? Oh dear. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Um, it is, cats can get solitary tumors in their lungs and they can live for a super long time. And if you can imagine, um, as you have problems in the lungs, um, it's easy for them to get secondary infections. So that would be my, my easy sort of veterinary answer. Um, whether or not, um, you know, it's hard because it, it's, it's not my case, but sometimes going and doing follow-up, yeah, which it sounds like you're doing follow-up x-rays, making sure that there has been deworm, some deworming done because there is also lungworms and Shelly and I have seen lungworms mm -hmm. um, and maybe making sure those boxes have all been checked. But absolutely, we all know people with cancer and things that can get secondary infections. So that's, I think that's a possibility. Um, okay, here it's Sweet Becca saying, I lost my cat to diabetes five days ago. I didn't know he had it. He was just having trouble walking. He had DN. His blood sugar was 430. Can you tell everyone the signs to look for? Um, diabetes most commonly is they're um, drinking a lot and they're peeing a lot. So big puddles in the litter box. 
Um, usually they're very ravenous, yet they're also losing weight because they're peeing out sugar. The diabetes, the disease does not allow them to store sugar, so they're wasting sugar. So they eat meat, but they still lose weight. Um, so I think if, if your cat is drinking a lot and peeing a lot, um, then that's probably the first sign. The neuropathy where they're down on, they're sort of down on their back legs, maybe don't jump as well, those usually come after a little while. Um, hard to say they're all individuals, so I'd really watch for those kinds of signs. Um, and it's pretty easy disease to rule out by seeing your veterinarian. Um, thank you, how are, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? I, I can, Wait, if there's one a couple more question. More. Sure. Okay. Um, a couple of, of people are asking what you think about raw diets like a commercial raw diet versus homemade raw diet versus <laughs> non-raw diet. Well, you end on an easy we, question. I know. That's right. <laughs> We've had this conversation before. Shelly and I have had it a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and I think that there's pros and I think that there's cons. I think if you go into a raw diet, you have to go in with your eyes open and make sure there's no immunosuppressed people in your house because there will be salmonella, salmonella and E. coli in there sometimes. They've done studies, they will find it sometimes. The other concern that I have with the raw diet is that when they've done, they've also, when, when these things have been looked into, one out of nine of them meet the minimum requirement, nutrient requirements. So raw diets can cost a significant um, amount of money. Um, so as probably everybody asking the question knows is that you don't save any money by doing a raw diet um, So if you're going to spend that kind of money, just make sure that it's balanced um, That's probably my, my biggest concern with raw diet is to, to make sure that it's balanced. My second one is the um, bacteria um, So for, for the cat and from and for the people in the household, if there's any children around, if there's immunosuppressed um, people, and also the cleaning that goes involved, that, that gets involved with the, um, the raw diet. So do tons of research. There's a website um, through one of the American universities called balanceit.com, and um, they will help you for your pet's needs, help you actually make a homemade balanced diet. It's a lot of work. I've had a lot of clients where they're, they're very interested in making a a homemade diet but when they go in and they actually find out what's involved what they actually need to do to make their balance their diet balanced they um it's too much it's costly and it's labor intensive and you're still scared that you don't have it quite right i i would be like i know because we did raw food for a while and we wanted to even send it out to a lab and have them yeah. test and you confirm can, that you, we had the everything that we thought we had in there but it, that was expensive too yeah, how much, what, in ballpark was it? A few hundred dollars? It was a few hundred to get like a few things tested, but if you wanted like taurine, and, you know, all of the extra things tested, it was like $1,400. To make sure, to get everything. To make yeah. sure your diet was balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then you always, periodically, are you okay with knowing about the salmonella and, mm -hmm. you know. So and you're saying if a cat eats, a cat can carry the salmonella yeah, like in their mouth. They so. can carry it in their mouth, so they go and they lick um, members of the household. They go and they, yeah. Then, then they will absolutely culture salmonella from there. And I have, I have seen pets die from salmonella and E. coli, just like people do. So I think it's. So I think you have to be prepared. And I'm, I'm not against homemade diets or necessarily raw. If somebody's really passionate, I think they just have to do it super cautiously, and they have to educate themselves a lot, a lot. And um, I think there are a lot of good diets that are out there where a lot of smart people have already done the work for us. Okay, that's a good answer. Um, okay, well, uh, everyone say thank you to Dr. Ferguson. This is Dr. Ferguson from uh, Mountain View Veterinary Hospital in, oh, there she is. There she is, now you can see, she, does, she has a head too. <laughs> people only ever see me from the, Usually the knee down, but sometimes also. No, no. Thank you for having me. And these kittens are super awesome. They're and super cute. They always, I, whenever, I, when I, sometimes I get the privilege of meeting the, the homes they go to, and I'm always blown away, like, how 
awesome these homes are. And mm -hmm. and not just these kittens, um, but the ones from Laps. Like people who truly just take them in as members of their household and it's mm -hmm. it's really, really cool. That's my favorite one of my favorite parts is they get to meet the awesome families who uh, who welcome these little kittens in. And I even met a dog from uh, that was adopted from Laps even before our practice opened. And I took a picture to send it to <gasps> Gwen at the shelter. Aww. She was adopted from Laps over three years ago, and her owner is just in love with her. Oh, that's and cool. and it was just so. So I took a picture. And I was like, I have to show the trainer because she will just. She love would it. love it. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, because they put the people at Laps too put their heart and soul and and Shelley. Um, put their heart and soul into making sure these guys have the best possible start. So it's yeah. very cool to meet the people and see that they go into such great homes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, that they're valued. So it's mvvet.ca. Um, um, if anyone's looking for a vet and you're in the Surrey, Langley, Vancouver area, <laughs> Seattle, I don't know, <laughs> anywhere in Seattle to Alaska, I highly recommend Dr. Ferguson. As you can see, she's awesome and very knowledgeable and treats even our rescue shelter kittens as if they were her own, which is um, something that not every shelter vet uh, does. And so we appreciate all of, all of the time she spends with us and how helpful she is. And she goes far, far above and beyond for us. So thank you, Dr. Ferguson. You're welcome. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> and I will post this video on uh, Facebook uh, for those who have missed it. Handsome. You came up to just say hi. I know. I think he's mad because I forced him to interact with the kittens. <laughs> and I didn't bribe him with any treats. But he did get into the baby cat, so. That's <laughs> not part of your diet. <laughs> hey, Draco, should I just leave it? Yeah. They thought I was really yummy. Oh, there's one of my badgers in this little bowl. Thank you. Mm hmm.
Say hi to Bartlett. Uncle Barty has arrived. Okay, I'm gonna do a reset and then I'll post the video. Thank you everybody for watching and we will be right back. Uh, right. Can I grab it? It's 